Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in analytical geometry. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with the questions we were doing yesterday. I have rewritten them just a little bit, just so that we can just write in the answers. And then we're going to have written in just the answers of the questions we've done already. And we're going to carry on. And I've got a whole bunch of, um, sorry, I didn't write that that's a half. I've got a whole bunch of exam paper questions. And the reason I'm doing this is because I find that a lot of my students actually um, really, really struggle with analytical geometry, specifically with respect to circles. So I thought it best if we do a whole bunch of these questions and get you really, 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 really um, get you really, really affair with what is going on with analytical geometry and circles. Okay, so let's calculate the coordinates of E. Sorry, I was a bit distracted because I had, um, my internet was saying that it was very high demand. So I was just making sure that everything was closed and I wasn't using the internet for anything else. Okay, but it's back to normal, life is good, let's carry on. So it says calculate the coordinates of E. E. So what are we doing? We're working out where the circle cuts the y-axis. Okay, so yesterday we worked out the formula for the circle is x minus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 13. That's what we worked out. Now what we're saying is we want to work out this value of E. But do you agree that x is 0 along that line? That there is at the point x equals 0. So we've got 0 minus 2 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to 13. And all we're going to do now is solve for y. And you'll see, if you do this, okay, let's just do this, it becomes 4 plus, sorry, plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to 13. So when you take that across, it becomes 9. So it's y minus 4 all squared is equal to 9. And you will see that if we multiply this out, it's going to become a trinomial. And we would expect two answers because it cuts yeah, and it cuts here. So we need to now change this into a trinomial. Actually, we don't. We can actually solve right now, which I'll show you how. Okay, I'm going to show you both ways, and then you guys need to decide which way you prefer. And the reason for that is if I show you this way and you make a mistake, then you're going to get it wrong. But let me show you. Okay, do you agree that that there is a perfect square and this is a perfect square? Okay, so that makes it a bit different. means that we can square root both sides. So we can go y minus 4 is equal to 3, or y minus 4 is equal to minus 3. And then what we can do is we can solve for y. So y is going to be 3 plus 4, which is 7. Or y is going to be minus 3 plus 4, which equals 1. So therefore, this value here is going to be 1, and that one there is 7. So that's the one way to solve it. The other way, which is the way that you normally have to solve it, if it doesn't look out so prettily, if it doesn't work out to be a perfect square, is you need to actually solve this as a trinomial. And I'll show you how to do that just in case you get a question where it's easier to do that. So we'll go y squared minus 8y plus 8 is equal to, sorry, not plus 8, plus 16. <sighs> sorry, let's try again. Plus 16 is equal to 9. Take the 9 across and we get y squared minus 8y plus 16 minus 9 equals 0. So that becomes y squared minus 8y. And that's plus, what is that, 7 equals 0. So it becomes y minus 7, y minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, y equals 1 or y equals 7. So not too difficult, but just the other way that you can do this question. Okay, so now we're going to erase just this bit here so that we can carry on and we've got space to write. So now we've calculated the coordinates of C, but I have been very bad, haven't I? Because I haven't written the coordinates of C. I have just given you the Y value of the coordinates of C, and they've actually asked you for the coordinates of E. So we actually need to tell them that this is 0.7. Now it says show that EM, 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 is parallel to AB. 
Okay, now we already worked out the equation of AB in the form y is equal to mx plus c over here, and we got the gradient of AB to be minus 3 over 2. Okay, now if EM is parallel to AB, what does that mean? It means that this is going to have the same gradient. So all that we need to do is work out the gradient from EM. So what is the gradient formula? The gradient formula is the change in Y is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So it doesn't matter which point you use, I'm going to call this point 1 and this point 2. So I've got 4 minus 7 over 2 minus 0. 4 minus 7 is 3 over 2, which is, this would be a negative. A negative. Negative 3 over 2, which is the same as m of a b so yay we've just shown that it's parallel okay good so now we've done that now it says determine whether or not the circles having equations x plus 2 y minus 4 equals 25 and x minus 5 y plus 1 equals 9 will intersect show all the calculations okay so let's just change color because that's a totally different question. In fact, it's got nothing to do with any of these questions. I'm going to raise a link. Okay, and what is it saying? It's saying we need to determine whether or not circles with the equations, the one equation, it's x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 25 and x minus 5 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 9 and they want to know if these two circles will intersect okay determine whether or not so what are they saying they want to know if they cross in other words there should be some value of x and y on this that will also be equal to this it'll make it work okay hmm it's quite tricky so what are we saying? Let me just draw this roughly. If it's x plus 2, y equals minus 4, x is plus 2, which is minus 2, y is 4. So it's actually here again, but this time the radius is 5. So therefore, whereas here it was square root of 13. So it's going to be a circle doing something like this. Again, I apologize for the horrible drawing. Compared to this one here, and I'm just going to do it in a different color. We make it blue. Let's do this one here, where it's x is minus 5, which means it cut goes through 5. So that is 5. Okay, so that is 2, 3, 4, 5. And y is plus 1, which means it's minus 1. And we basically say that that radius there is 3. Because it's 5 minus 1, so the radius there is 3. And we're saying that if that there is 3, they want to know, will these two graphs cut? Okay, so from my drawing, it doesn't look like they cut, but that doesn't mean a thing. Do you agree that if I work out the distance from year to year, if the distance from there to there is bigger than the radius of these two, okay, do you agree that they don't cut? Whereas if the radius is shorter, then it means they cut. Okay, so let's work that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the distance between, between their centers, between their centers. Okay, so the radius of the green one, I mean the center of the green one is minus 2, 4. And the center of this one is 5 minus 1. So now we want to find the distance. But remember what the distance formula is. And it's on your formula sheet, so there's no excuse not to find it. It's x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared is equal to the distance. Which is what? So we've got, it doesn't matter which one we do, we're going to do minus 2 minus 5 all squared plus... 4 minus minus 1 all squared, which is the square root of 2 minus 5 is minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7, squared is 49, 
plus 4 plus 1 is 5 squared is 25. So therefore, this is the square root of 5 and 9 is 14. That is 74. Square root of 74. Okay, which is, and let's just get our calculators out and work out what that is. The square root of 74. Square root, oh, let's do this. Square root of 74 equals, that's an help, 8. Oh, let me just change the mode. Shift, setup. I'm going to change it to 1, okay, and change it to 1, okay, there you go. So let's do that again, we go square root of 74 equals, oh, it's still doing that, okay, wait, shift, mode, uh, let's go, sorry, let's go 7, and then, I don't actually want it, the shift mode, no, let's try again. Shift mode. Um, and then let's put it on normal. Okay. Ah, there we go. 8.60. So it's 8.60 equals 8,60. Okay, right. Now what do we need to do? We need to find, that's the actual distance, right? Now we need to take the radius of the two. So what do we have? The radius of the first one is the radius squared. Remember, this is the radius squared. So what is the actual radius? Do you agree that the radius is 5? This one is 5. And this one is 3 because it's the square root of 9, which adds up to 8, which is, do you agree that the radii are shorter? The radii are shorter. So in fact, what I could have done is the center, the radii is shorter than the distance. So I'm right. In fact, my drawing was perfectly correct because what we're saying is the total difference between the centers is 8 comma 6, but this one's radius is only 3, okay? And this one's radius is 5, so therefore there's a gap of 0, 6 that's not covered. So therefore we can say that no, they do not intersect. It's a very nice question that. It's very, very nice. And the reason it's nice is because one would assume that one would have to try and find these points here. But actually, if you just work out whether the distance between the centers is big or smaller than the sum of the radii, okay, then you get the answer. Right, let's look at the next question. It says, in the diagram below, a circle with center M54 touches the y-axis at N. So this is the y-axis, okay? And intersects x-axis at A and B. PBL is a tangent and SKL is a tangent. Okay, so they're both tangents. Where SKL is parallel to x-axis. So that angle there is 90 degrees, by the way. Okay, and P and S are points on the y-axis. Thank you for sharing. And LM is drawn, so fun. Right, now it says, write down. Write down the length of the radius of the circle having center M. Well, that's really easy because do you agree that it touches at N and that's the center of the circle? So we know that, oh, let me just fix that. We know that that length there is the length of the radius. So this is 0, x value of that is 0, and the x value of this is 5, so the radius is 5. Woo. Okay, now it says, write down the equation of the circle having center m in the form of this. Now the only thing you need to be careful of is the fact that this is x minus 5 squared plus y minus 4 squared, and then the only other thing you need to be careful of, and this is where my matrix often, often make mistakes, is they forget to square. They write 5 when in fact the correct answer is 25. Okay, now they say calculate the coordinates of A. So do you agree A is where the y-axis is 0? Okay, we we'll calculate the coordinates of A and they say, uh, let me just see where the y-axis is zero. Okay, so then all that we're gonna do is we're gonna let y equal to zero. We're gonna go x minus five all squared 
plus 0 minus 4 all squared is equal to 25. So you got x minus 5 all squared plus 4 squared is 16 equals 25. So we've got x minus 5 all squared is equal to 9. Therefore, we can say x minus 5 is equal to 9 or x minus 5 is equal to minus 9. Okay, therefore x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 4. I'm not very happy with that. Can you tell why I'm not happy with that? I'm not happy with that because of the fact that I can see from here that this, these are two points that are on the axis and they're both in the positive x-axis. So something's wrong here. So I need to just have a look at this. I've got x minus 5 uh, plus 0 minus 4 because the y value at this point is 0 squared is equal to 25 the radius okay so you got x minus 5 squared plus 16 4 squared is 16 is equal to 25 25 minus 16 is 9 so it's x minus 5 squared is equal to 9 okay let us try this from a different angle oops okay and see if we can get it right so do you agree that we've got x minus 5 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 25. We've decided that already because that length there is x length and therefore that's 5. Okay, so now we want the coordinates of A where this cuts the x-axis and where it cuts the x-axis y is equal to 0. So you've got x minus 5 squared plus 0 minus 4 squared is equal to 25. So you've got x minus 5 squared plus, this will become 16, is equal to 25. So then you've got x minus 5 squared is equal to 25 minus 16, which is 9 is x minus 5 squared. Okay, that's where we were last time. Let's see what happens now. This time I'm going to take this across. Um, and we have got x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus 9 equals 0. So you end up with x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus 9 is 16 equals 0. Okay. Am I right? x squared 25 minus 9 is 16, yes. So then if we factorize that, we've got 1 and 1 and we've got 4 and 4 and we've got 8 and 2. There we go. So it becomes x minus 8, x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 8 or x equals 2, then obviously this is value 2. But they say calculate the coordinates as 2, 0, 2, 0. And then obviously b, which they've already told us, is 8, 0. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so I'm not sure why that other method didn't work, it should work, but otherwise, like I said before, Always try and do it as perfectly as possible using the actual quadratics, okay? So we've done, sorry, we've done that. Now it says, if the coordinates of B are 8, 0, which we've worked out, calculate the gradient of MB. MB, so they want that gradient. Um, do we really need to calculate the gradient of MB? Yes, we do. Yes, we do, because we don't have it. We don't have PL yet. Okay, so the gradient of MB is obviously just going to be the change in Y over change of X of your MB. So your gradient of MB, I'm going to write it over here, M of MB equals the change in Y over the change in X. So let's call this question 2 and this question 1. So then we've got change in Y is 0 minus 4. So what 8 naught minus 4 it is? Minus 4 over 8 minus 5 is 3. So therefore, do you agree the gradient 
of this is negative 4 over 3. And guys, always look to see if what you worked out actually makes sense, okay? Yeah, you've got a negative answer, and this is a negative slope, okay? So that makes sense. It's quite cool. Okay, right, let's carry on. So let's just get rid of this. Rid of this. Okay, while I'm getting rid of this, read the next question and think about what you think you might do in order to get to the answer. So just think about it. The next question is equation of the tangent PB in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So they want the equation of the tangent PB in the form y equals mx plus c. So what are they looking for? They're looking for that equation. Okay, so what do we know? We know the point on it, okay, and we know the gradient, okay, do you agree? Because if this gradient here is minus 4 over 3, remember that the gradient of the tangent and the gradient of the radius are perpendicular. That means that this gradient is going to be the inverse negative of this gradient. So therefore, m is going to be 3 over 4. Right, so then we know that that gradient. Now we need to substitute a point, um, I don't know, maybe this point B, into that equation to get our formula for the equation. So you've got y is equal to 3 over 4x plus c. We're going to substitute the point, that point in. So we've got 0 is equal to 3 over 4 times by 8 over 1 plus c, so that cancels with that and gives you 2, and 3 times 2 is 6 plus c, therefore c is going to be negative 6. Yay, so now we've got this. So the formula is y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 6. There you go. Okay, now let's see what else they got. They say find the equation of the tangent S scale. They want the equation of the tangent S scale. S K L. They want the equation of this. Okay, before we do anything else, what I really want to do is make sure that I haven't missed any information about angles and lines S scale. Okay, so let's look at this line and let's read it. The information. Circle center M54 lies on N intersects. It goes parallel to P. Okay, fine. So now what do they want? They want the equation of SKL. Hmm. But do we not know that SKL? Yes, we do. We know that SKL is parallel to the x-axis. So we know that SKL is parallel to the x-axis, which is great because all we need to then know is what is that y value. That's how easy this is. And do you agree that we know that the radius is five units long, right? And this y value is four. So if we add five, what do we get to? We get to y is equal to nine. So the correct answer is y is equal to 9. There you go. Not too bad, hey? And guys, there is a trick to this. Remember that it says write down the equation, the tangent SKL. And if you look at the formulas, I mean, if you look at the mark allocation, you'll see that the mark allocation is actually quite low. It'll be like one or two marks. And then you know you don't have to do a huge calculation. Whereas if the mark allocation is big, then obviously you have to do a calculation. And the other thing is it's, it's said write down. So if it's saying write down, then it means that you don't actually have to work it out. It should be fairly obvious. Right. Now it says show that this point here is 29. 29. That's what they want. Okay. Do you agree that L intersects this SL, but that's not what we're going to be using. It also intersects this whatever is that, ML, and then finally it intersects on this graph here. But do you agree that we found the equation of PB? We did. It was y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 6. Okay, that was PB. Um, equation of the term, yes, PB. Okay, PB, which is the same as the equation of BL, right? So we've got that, 
and we've got that y equals 9. So do you think I could maybe substitute 9 into that and we'll find the y value? So let's do that. We've got y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 6. We're going to sub in that y equals 9. So 9 is equal to 3 over 4x minus 6. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm saying I know that the y value on this line, this LB line, I know that the y value on this line is 9, and I want to find the x value of that, okay? Because if I do that, then I've actually, I've actually, if I did, sorry, if I find that, I'm going to find that that's 20, okay? So let's do that. So we're going to go 9 plus 6, 9 plus 6, is 15 and that is equal to 3 quarters x right x so how am i going to get x i'm going to multiply this side by 4 over 3 and i'm obviously going to multiply this side by 4 over 3. so therefore we've got 15 times 4 over 3 is equal to x and what you could do is you can cancel the 3 with the 15 and leave a 5, and 5 times 4 is 20. Ta da! So we've just proven that this is 20, that the x value of L is 20. Done. Now it says calculate the length of ML, ML, in third form. Now, grade 12, don't think that because you couldn't get proved that L was 29, that you now can't use it to calculate the length of ml in third form of course you can use it they gave it to you there that's the whole point of them saying show that is because they're assuming that somewhere along the line you may have made a mistake especially in exams okay, in exam mode and then you lose all your marks whereas if we say to you show the other is 29 we're saying even if you can't show it use it for the rest of the questions okay so that's what we're doing so now let me just make some space I really wish I had a thingy that didn't erase. Oh, never mind. Stop moaning. Okay, right. So let's carry on. Calculate the length of ML in third form. Calculate the length of ML in third form. Okay. We want this. Okay. So do you agree the length? The length is a change in Y. So Y2 minus Y1 squared plus Y plus x2 minus x1 all squared. Okay, so that's there is my formula for the length. So now let's substitute in. We've got, and we're going to call this point 2, and we're going to call this point 1, because there's a 1 there anyway. So we're going to go square root of 2, which is 9 minus 4 all squared, plus 20 minus 5 all squared, so that becomes 5 squared plus 20 plus 5 is 15 squared. And I don't know what 15 squared is without a calculator. I should. I think it's 225. But let me just check. So we've got 15 squared. Yay! Plus 25 equals 250. And they said leave the answer in third form. So there you go. It's a square root of 250. Square root of 250. Okay, now it says, determine the equation of the circle going through points K, L, and M in the form that, da, da, da. Okay, so let's choose another color. Let us choose this horrible color. Okay, they want to pretend that there's a circle going through K. It's not a horrible color, you just can't really see it. K, L, and M. So they're saying, let's pretend there's a circle going through K, L, L, and M. I don't know how to draw a circle that goes through K, L, M. Okay, that orangey thing is supposed to be a circle going through K, L, and M. And it says, determine the equation of the circle passing through the points K, L, and M in the form of this. Okay, so let's see what all we've already worked out because if we look at what we've already worked out maybe we've already got all the information do you agree that we need to work out the center and we need to work out the radius okay so we need that so let's go look for that okay so do you agree that um we worked out the length from here to here 
okay, from M to L. Where was the length from L to L? I thought we did. There it is. Square root of 250. Okay. So that is the diameter, okay, of our circle. So do you agree that somewhere here we have our radius? Okay. So that there is the diameter of our circle, and that there might be the radius, okay? And I say might be because my drawings are also always off, okay? It's somewhere around there. So then do you agree I've got x minus p all squared plus y minus q all squared is equal to c squared? And what did we say the c squared was? We said it was half this length. So it's half the square root of 250. Do you agree? All squared. Half the square root of 250. All squared. So we're going to square root that answer. And then we're going to halve it. Okay, I just need to check something. Okay, um, normally I wouldn't bother to square this because it ends up being the same thing again, okay? Because it says calculate the length of ML insert form to square root of 250. So we know that the whole of this is 250, the square root of 250. So we want half of it, okay? Half of the square root of 250. But remember that the formula is R squared. So we're going to take half the square root of 250 and square it. And that's where I'm going with this. So. Let me just show you, it becomes clear, 0 0.5 times the square root, square root of 250 equals, and then I press the SD button, and it's 7.91. So that's equal to 7,91, and I'm just wondering if I squared it. Um, I didn't square it because then I now have to square this, okay? So I have to square it. So then I square it and I get 62.5. So that is 62,5 is the radius, okay? Now what do we need to do? They want us to determine the equation of this. So in order to find the equation of this, we need to find the center point of these two points. So we want to find the midpoint. So the first point is 5, 4, and the next point is 29. So how do we find the midpoint? Well, we just add them and divide by 2. We go 5 plus 4, sorry, let's try again. 5 plus 20 divided by 2 is going to be 25 over 2, boring, or 4 plus 9 over 2 is going to be 13 over 2. So therefore, we can say that x minus 25 over 2 all squared plus y minus, there it is, 13 over 2 all squared. Ta-da! And there you go. Sure. Okay, so that was quite a long sum. Grade 12, you must, must remember that every time we come across a question like this, I don't necessarily have done it. I mean, the teachers haven't necessarily done it. All that they're doing is applying their knowledge in order to get it to go, in order to, to get the answers out, okay? They're applying their knowledge to go step by step to get the answers out. Right, so now it says, in the diagram alongside, okay, just a second, I need to cough, sorry. Okay, in the diagram alongside, the origin O is the center of the circle. Well, that's quite useful. We've got A is point X, Y, and B is minus 3, 4 are points on the circle. So we've got, what do we got? We've got A and we've got B and they're points on the circle. And AOB is the diameter. So that means that this whole angle is 90 degrees. Awesome. And it says BD is a tangent. Awesome. Now it says find the equation of the circle. Okay, so that's pretty easy because all we have to do is use this value to find the radius. Okay. Because why? Because this is centered on the origin. So the equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So x is minus 3, so it's going to be minus 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to r squared. So that's going to be 9 plus, so it's 9 plus 16 
is equal to r squared, so therefore r squared equals 25. So therefore the radius of the circle is going to be 5, okay? But they didn't ask that right now. All they said is they wanted the equation of the circle. So the equation of the circle is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. There you go. That's how easy that was. Now it says work out the coordinates of A. Okay. So do you agree that A, if B is minus 3, 4, A has to be, because this is the diameter of the circle, it's kind of a mirror image of it, okay? So if this goes along by 5, then obviously this goes along by 5. But more importantly, what has done, what's happened is they've swapped, okay? Do you see that here we've got a negative X and here we've got a positive X? Do you see here we've got a positive Y and here we've got a negative Y? Okay, so therefore their values are swapped around, okay, but, but, okay, the values are swapped around, but it's fairly easy, therefore, to work this out. <sighs> so, what do we have? This is 3, 4, so therefore this is going to be minus 4, 3. There you go. Okay, excellent. So we found the coordinates of A, and I'm going to write them over here. It's minus 4, 3. Now we want the coordinates of C. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. We know what the radius is. We know it's 5. So the coordinates of C are just going to be naught. Sorry, let's try again. X is minus 5. Y is naught. Why? Because we know that the radius of E is 5, so therefore this is minus 5 naught. Okay, so that's easy. The equation of AB. The equation of AB. Hmm. Hmm. So, do you agree we already have a point on it? We haven't worked out the gradient, but we can. But if we really wanted to, we could just use these two points for the gradient, just for fun. And then we also know it cuts the axis at zero. So, therefore, we know that this formula of the equation is only going to be y is equal to mx. That's all it is. You're just trying to find m's answer, okay? So we know that m is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so therefore, let's just do it. We're going to call this point 1 and we're going to point this point 2. So it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Y2 is 3 minus 4 all over X2, which is minus 4 minus minus 3. So therefore, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. Minus 4, it's minus 4 plus 3. So minus 1 is minus 1. And 4 over is minus 1, which becomes 1. Hmm, I'm not happy with that. I'm finding the equation of AB, but that's positive and I want a negative gradient. Oh, that was, no, that is, oh no, that's wrong. Oh, guys, why don't you let me know that I made a mistake? This is not minus 4, 3. It, the values are right, just the signs are wrong. This is going to be, it is basically going to be the same type of principle, okay? Yeah, we went across 4 and up across 3 and up 4. Yeah, we're going to go across 3 and down 4. So it is 3, 3 minus 4. 3 minus 4. Oh, sorry, guys. 3 minus 4, which means we were getting this wrong. That's why I was stressing so much. Okay, so let's just cut that in. Sorry. And the reason I know it's 3 minus 4 is because of the fact that it's a reflection, okay? And uh, it's a reflection about the y-axis. I mean, not the y-axis, y equals x9. Okay, right. So let's carry on the student black. Okay. So this time we're doing the equation of AB. So we've got y is equal to mx. That's all there is because c doesn't exist for this because it's 0. So now what do we know? We know that m is equal to, in this case, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? And again, we're going to call this point 1 and this point 2, so we've got minus 4 minus 4 all over 3 
my, sorry, three minus minus three. So that becomes minus eight over three minus, that becomes plus, it's six, which is negative four over three. Ta-da! So therefore we've got a negative gradient, life is good. And that gradient M is equal to negative four over three. So that's the equation of AB. And guys, I'm going to again challenge you to take a screenshot and try and do the last two questions. Um, the equation of, ten, of the tangent BD shouldn't be too difficult. And the size of angle DVC. Okay, I admit that that is going to be a bit of work, but I'm pretty sure and confident that you guys could work it out. So please go try that, and then I will see you tomorrow and we'll do more maths. Have a great day.